Greetings, ladies and mental gents, and welcome to this daily science fiction extravaganza, commonly known as Tales, Tales from Out from space. Out, space, out, space. Out, space. Taken from the subreddit HFY. All the relevant links will be down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. And if you do, please consider supporting the channel. On to the science fiction. Story number one, An End to War, written by Hardlight Serial. Max was talking about the human wars today, but middle-aged Fenchin looked down at his son. Max, he's the human boy, isn't he? The youngster nods. I can see why he'd be interested in the human wars. Frightening things, those. Were you there, father? Oh, no. The human wars happened long before humans went into Stella, longer than us Fenchin, too. Still, I've read the books and seen the movies. The human wars were terrible things. Which war did Max tell the class about? The one against him, um, hit, 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 Hitler. Another nod. The war on Hitler was very bad war. It was not so cruel to the soldiers at the first human war, but it was harder on the people. Hitler was a tyrant. He hurt his people and his country and his lust for power. It took most of terror put together to stop him. Did they send all the soldiers, Dad? They sent all their soldiers, and then more. Just about every male human wanted to fight him and his armies. They couldn't stand to see such cruelty. The boys, too. No, not the boys. They wanted to fight, but their parents wouldn't let them. Little boys are always safe from war, even the human wars. What about the human boys in Hitler's country? Those boys were not safe. He couldn't hurt the boys in other countries, but his own children he could hurt very harshly. We're lucky to have such good rulers today. There will not be such blood if we go to war again. What did the workers do while the soldiers fought, Dad? Did they build ships? Didn't I tell you? They fought too, but... The father smiles down at his confused son. I know it's hard to think of, but when humans go to war... They all fight. The workers become soldiers until the war is won. And what do they do when they win? The soldiers become workers again. Then, uh, why aren't you working? Why won't they let you work now that the war is over? Why can't you stay for longer? The Fenchin loses his smile. Because I'm not a human. My war is over, and so am I. Don't be sad, Sam. We still have a few weeks left. End of story. Story number two, Secondary System Online, written by Scientific Theory. The war had kicked off rapidly. There was no slow ramp, no climb of hostilities, just the abrupt and bloody crush of one force against another. The Arvine monarchy against the Terran legions. Short, brutal strikes immediately lined up, covering bold smash and grabs for resources. Both sides burned with fury and propaganda spread in mass. Despite both sides holding alliances, nobody wanted to throw themselves into the firestorm. After punishing losses, the Arvine hoped to gain a vital military intelligence via the capture of a commanding officer, someone who would either help turn the tide or expose the human strategic thinking. Unfortunately, they succeeded. Captain Jenkins was captured aboard the UEF Heartbreaker and brought into the interrogation facility. This would prove to be the turning point of the conflict. A large reptilian slammed its fist into the side before hissing into his ear. We have asked nicely. We will not do the same again. You may be unusually durable, little human, but we will break you. The translation came through courtesy of the latest implants. Thanks for the heads up, but I can't help you. A massive hand wrapped around the side of his head. Please tell us where you were trained. I find no pleasure in crushing you. This will not feel good. Look, it's not that I don't want to help you. I just... Uh, was all the Captain Jenkins managed to get out before his head was forcibly slammed into the table, courtesy of another implant whose sole purpose was to prevent the dissemination of classified material. 
We are not interested in your excuses, human. Anger bubbling up in the voice of Jenkins' interrogator, or the former interrogator. Arbiter Trask was unaware that despite the general durability human anatomy, the human cortex was remarkably fragile. The solid metal table and the brute strength of Arbiter delivered a planar facial impact powerful enough to drive the bone and cartilage through the nasal sinus and into the frontal lobe. Even without the bony intrusion, his brain rebounded hard enough off the cranium that it burst blood vessels, generating several subdural hematomas. Captain Jenkins was very dead. Trask flipped him back up into his seat before noticing the mixture of blood and clear fluid leaking down his face. Weak little bags of flesh, frick! He slammed his hands on the table. Medical! If he had accidentally killed the first human officer they had managed to capture without gaining anything, there was a very real risk of execution. Trask stormed out of the room as two small XMTs rushed into the room. As the door clicked shut, a third implant clicked in. Secondary system online. One of the defining features of military academies was the four-year-long endoskeleton implantation process included in the education. On top of the cognitive implants were physical enhancements and a small AI core with extremely narrow parameters. In the event of capture, it would remain inactive outside of pain management during torture, which complete activation occurred on death. Once death, it assumed direct control. Assertion presence of other human captives protective found. Subparameter other captives. Subparameter determined value of other captives. Free or leave. Gather intelligence while returning humans to safety if possible. Else, inflict maximum death, destruction, and damage to military forces. Else, if recaptured, self-destruct. As the two XMTs were scrambling to set up a scanner, Captain Jenkins's ruined nose stood back out with the wet schnick. Both of them froze, no longer leaking fluids, its pupils dilated, and micropores opened across the body for gas diffusion. Internally, carbon matrices twisted in alignment within the bones and muscles, while nanotubes bridged neural synapses. Sharing the nervous agons at one another, the technicians pulled the scanner back. Are you okay, Prisoner Jenkins? Do you need medical attention? Blank-faced, it turned its head to one side that spoke and responded in perfect inflectionless tone at exactly 400 hertz. Secondary system online... It did not blink. Are there any other humans captured within this facility? Folding down the scanner, the technician shared another glance. Prisoner Jenkins, you have suffered what we believe is a serious brain injury. Do you need medical treatment? The one speaking subtly motioned to the other to go. We have a number of advanced treatments available, and at the very least we should set an IV to help replace lost fluids. The second tech was still slowly moving away when the machine was Jenkins exerted external pressure on eight carpal and five metacarpal bones in each wrist, neatly sliding each arm free. The right, stronger, handed in its bias, whipped back and with no wasted motion, the left leg throw angle diagonal pivot kicked the chair back before hurling it up and over the back of the door. Before either tech could attempt to unblock the door and escape, Jenkins, that is, grabbed both techs and twisted it against the non-dominant muscles to pin both, socket joint dislocated, escalate dismember. There was an uncomfortable fluidity to its motions, each muscle moving exactly as if it had needed to, each step throwing perfectly into the next. Are there any other humans captured within this facility? The terror clear on both technicians' faces. Please, don't hurt me, one of them whispered, still clutching the medical scanner like a sign against death. Jenkins, that is, blinked. Bill, your survival assist in obtaining my goals. Yes, yes, please. Jenkins, that is, paused. Threat, low, restrain, interrogate. If your survival later interferes, you will be dismembered. Are there any other humans captured within this facility? Yes. They are being held in the containment room just down the hall. A piece of the scanner broke under the pressure. Room ETA-217. Jenkins, that is, that did not move. Are there any other sapiens captured within this facility? 
delivered in the same unnerving 400 hertz monotone. No, you are the first group to be brought in. Excellent. Task complete. A click came from the door as a muffled thump from the other side. Jenkins, that is, pulled the two technicians to the far side of the room. As tactical non-combatants, you may evacuate. If you interfere, you will be killed. Walking over to the door, he shouted in perfect mimicry of the first tech. Hold on to the chair, we got wrenched by the door. Arbiter Trask was very surprised when he opened the door. Arbiter Trask was also... Threat high, interrogate, remove. Trained in combat and immediately closed with the human in an attempt to negate the surprise with his size. Jenkins, that is, shifted just far enough to avoid the long arm swing before... Open ribcage, destabilized spinal column, slamming a fist into one of the exposed ribs with enough force to lift Trask back off the ground. The open architecture of Arvine chest cavities meant that the rib pair had nothing to hold its rotation, and with the ripping of tendons and spinal column rotated immediately, paralyzing everything below that rib. Jenkins, that is, stepped over the now useless leg and grabbed him by the arm that lashed out and twisted it behind Trask's back. Socket joint, dislocate, escalate, dismember. Provide data and explain how to access the human containment and escape. It had returned to its monotonal speech. Arbiter Trask sat shocked for a moment, having been ripped from his position of fear and power to one of just fear. And defiance. I will not reveal our secrets, and even when I ask, Jenkins that is used the bone of Trask's arm as a lever and its own as a fulcrum. With a sickening pop, the socket broke free. Speaking over Trask's scream, provide data, access, explain how to access human containment, how to destroy this facility, and modes of escape. Sobbing, Trask tried to continue, no, I will not betray... But the sick, ripping tear, Jenkins, that is, escalated. Task lost consciousness. When the Arbiter came through, he heard the muttered prayer of an ancient divinities before realizing it was the technicians huddled together next to a pile of vomit. He stared at the emptiness of his side. Give me the data access, explain how to access the human containment, how to destroy this facility, and modes of escape. Jenkins, that is, towered over him. Their roles more reversed than he ever could have imagined. Will you let me live? Task finally looked up into the empty face that would howl Jenkins just ten minutes earlier. There was a pause. Will your survival assist in me obtaining my goals? He shuddered at the other will be monotone. Yes, I'll do anything you ask. Just please let me live. It stared at him for a moment. Your shoulder has already been bound to prevent blood loss. The technicians will be allowed to treat you if you help. The Arvine breathed out, tears running down its face. The data pad in my right front pocket contains a local copy of the site's database, as well as being an access key for all areas. The hangar is a quarter mile away, and the engine is a fissionable thermonuclear device in case of capture. He took another breath as Jenkins that was grabbed the device. Pad, set, password, now. Pad, transfer, ownership, Captain Jenkins. Jenkins, that is, took a minute to flip through the data pad. Severely understaffed experimental craft and program. Walking, it took three precise steps while reading, before gently inserting a needle into Task's back and just below the twisted rib and had taken his tail and legs. The technicians looked on and horrified as they briefly looked confused before seizing and dying. Content with its reading, it walked to the door before looking over the technicians huddled in the corner. I lied to him. You have 15 minutes. Recording ends. Oh, that was uploaded to the vessel the technicians took as part of the security persistence algorithm. If they hadn't escaped, the Inquisitor would have been lost with all hands and no records. Diplomacy. Released. War. What do you mean? Diplomacy, they didn't escape. You just saw the video. They were released by whatever the hell it is the humans turn into when you kill them. Science, not all of them. So far, we only know of this captain, but it seems unlikely that they are in any significant difference preventing all of them from being able to do this. War, so how do we fight this? Economy, it took 
213 planet hours of productivity to build that ship. On average, we were losing nearly a full planet day of production per day. This is unsustainable. War. What about the propaganda? Is there nothing we can do? Economy. Propaganda projected to stabilize and decrease its effectiveness. We need a new direction. Science. Peace. Diplomacy. Peace. War. No! Economy. Peace. War. You cannot do the... War. Muffled. Struggling. Peace. Hello. I believe that adjourns the sanctum. The folly of war is to be ended. Ambient sounds. Wet impact. Peace. Thank you. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this dose of science fiction fun. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you did, please don't forget to support the author from the link down below. But if you want to support this channel, there are links as well down below for you to help with. But the easiest way would be to share this video. And if you are so inclined, subscribe as well. I will see you all in the next episode, and I hope that you all have a fantastic time until then. Cheers.